Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. Today I have Law with me, and Law is a podcaster who I found, I guess, via my host, and he is a creative entrepreneur, and so we're going to talk about his podcast, and we're going to talk about why he does what he does. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I want you to explain to my audience as to why you started your podcast and as to what you are trying to do with your podcast. Yeah, I started my podcast basically because I wanted to create a podcast for like years before um, it started to listen to David Curry when he invented podcasting way back when. Um, he used to be a Dutch DJ and I was a fan of his. Um, but there never seemed to be like the right topic. So I was always looking at like work topics to do podcasts on. And one of the things I love to do is to draw, uh, to visualize stuff. Um, and for me, somehow that didn't feel like an excellent thing to do a podcast on because podcasts are audio, right? And I love to do audio, but I just thought, yeah, a visual podcast that will never, will never work. Uh, but it does actually, because what I now do is I interview um, people that are in the graphic recording community or the sketch noting community. And I just ask them base questions, not unlike what you're doing with entrepreneurs. And actually a lot of people listen to that. Well, I wouldn't know because I haven't looked at the stats, but I get a lot of positive feedback on that podcast that people like really love the intentions and the, the views of people behind the graphic recorder that they see in the front of the room drawing on like 10 feet of paper. When you say sketching, you mean it's sketching in all this notebook, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I'm not talking yes. art here. I'm talking basically notes in either a notebook or on 10 feet of paper slapped on a wall with <laughs> markers. Now um, I'm laughing because how the heck did you come up with that as a subject? I mean, when you said sketching, I thought you were talking about art sketching. I didn't realize sketching notes could be a podcast subject. Talk about niche podcast. Yeah. Gee, uh, ridiculously, Jeez. not even that niche anymore because there are at least three other podcasts that I'm aware of that do the same thing. Um, oh my God. It's kind of amazing, but I think I was one of the first ones to start podcasting. Uh, I'm not as prolific though as some others. Uh, Mike Rohde, the inventor of sketchnoting, um, who coined the phrase. Uh, he's from Milwaukee and he basically turns out whole seasons and is way ahead of me in terms of volume. So you... You are calling it sketch noting, yes. which means you does a iPhone count. So if people do a sketch of a note on their iPhone, which you guys can do now in iOS 10 or iOS 11 or on the Android side, does that count as sketch noting? Or are you t just talking about a normal writing down in a notebook? Well, it's one of the most heated debates in the sketch noting community. But for me, any way that you can take notes, be it digital or in, on paper, is fine. And the whole thing, what makes it a sketch note is that if you like embellish your notes with some illustrations and some containers to connect subjects and topics, in other words, if you doodle uh, to take notes, that those are sketch notes, in my opinion. Uh, whether you take them on your iPhone or on a napkin, doesn't matter. So could a student in the classroom do this? Because the reason why I'm asking is because a lot of my audience, not only is so entrepreneurs, but they're disabled as well. So could a student who has limited mobility use sketch noting as a form of taking notes? I think they could. Um probably depending of course on the type of disability uh, but i probably with the use of some um, some some 
additional software. Um, but if you have use of your hands, it actually may, may speed up your um, your note taking uh, because you don't have to like do a lot of typing. Just yes. Off icons yes. Or, or, yes. Or ba basically just doodle what you want to remember. The fun thing is, if you do that, you actually remember up to twenty nine percent more of what you're taking notes of. So it's not just a fun thing to do. It's it's actually a very effective way to take notes. Say that number again. I heard you, but I want my audience to hear that number yeah. because I'm 29%. sitting there shocked. I'm yeah. sitting there shocked. So if you, okay, I'm going to try scheduling now because I am a true believer if you have um, use of your hands, you are even with a stick or with an Apple Pencil, you can do sketch noting because that statistic is actually shocking to me. I did not realize that. Yeah, well, uh, when I got started, I didn't realize it either. I just got started for fun uh, because it, it was a fun thing to do. Um, and I, I couldn't draw, I still can't. So I thought that this would be the next best thing to practice. And then as it turns out, I, I noticed that I remembered everything that I, that I took notes of in that way. And then I thought, mm, it's probably somebody somewhere that has researched this. And uh, it turns out there is. Um, and based on that research, uh, they came up with a number of 29% better recall using that note-taking technique. So that's what I now um, use in my marketing <laughs> as a number. But it's, um, uh, it is based on personal experience and uh, some science that it's apparently because you engage your brain not just um, with normal language, but also with visual language, the combination of those two just uses more neurons and therefore you remember more, something like that. But I'm not the scientist here, right? So I'm, I'm You're not the scientist. But what made you want to get into sketch noting? Well, I used to be a very bad mind mapper. Um, oh, and, boy. <laughs> and I say this with a lot of love because that's how I got started. And I noted that my mind maps, they had a lot of words in them because I have yeah. what some would consider beautiful handwriting. Yes. So I, I didn't feel the need to like create a lot of drawings. But in the mind mapping community, that is considered wrong. And then all of a sudden, somebody gave me a book by Mike Rohde called Sketchnoting, or it's the Sketchnote Handbook. And in that book, there were all kinds of notes that looked sort of like my notes, but then better. And I decided right then and there, okay, this is how I'm going to take notes, because I just love this. It's really close to what I'm doing already. Uh, so let's just double down on that. Um, and again, just for kicks, right? It was just me having fun. Uh, and then I discovered that it actually made me more effective. Isn't that interesting? Because they say you can mind map out the yin yang, and I'm not saying don't mind map, but just do what works for you. If you have a version of mind mapping that works for you, i.e., sketch noting, use it because mm -hmm. I'm a really creative person. And my handwriting is horrible. I admit that publicly. My handwriting is horrible. So I am the next person who tells me to mind map. I'm going to say, well, I have a different idea. Sketch noting and make it visual and pretty mm -hmm. at that. Yeah, again, I, I still have a lot of love for mind mapping. It's one of the techniques I still use when doing sketch notes. Because for me now, mind mapping is just one form that I can use to take notes. And uh, the one that I prefer is actually a combination of classic college note taking, but then with lots of nice images, or at least images that I consider nice. Yeah. And I can also draw in real time because that's the, the trick, right? I, I, I don't ink afterwards or anything. I just, I, I, I take a regular pen and I create them in real time. So I don't have to go over them again after. That's the sport. That's the sport of mind mapping slash note taking there and note sketching as you call it. And so 
why did you want to share your, I know you said you discovered this and then started a podcast, but why did you want to start sharing deeper knowledge on this? Do you think it has something to do with mind, how much mind mapping they tell you to do in schools? Uh, why did you want to share your knowledge on this? Well, honestly, it was um, a bit of a, 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 an egoistical reason. Egoistical, I think, is the correct English pronunciation. Yes. Um, I found that when you really want to learn something, the best way to like speed that up, that learning process, is to start teaching it as soon as possible. So the minute I discovered that I now knew something that not everybody knew, I started doing workshops and conferences, and people just loved it. And I got better at that craft by doing that. You know, starting a podcast for me was also an opportunity to reach out to the people whose books I was reading and ask them for an interview. And most of them graciously agree to this, to my amazement, honestly, because um, I did not know that that was how podcast interviews are generally um, conducted, right? You invite someone and they say yes, and then you have an interview and it's just a regular talk. And I didn't realize that um, even my stars are in the end, just normal people. Um, for example, my first interview was actually with Mike Rody. Um, so I was like totally blown away by this. Um, and still it was a great talk. He taught me some nice tricks in that talk. So doing the podcast also makes me better at the craft of sketch noting and of graphic recording. Yes, I definitely agree. I'm going back to school for journalism and doing a podcast makes me better at the craft of journalism and getting people's stories before I even get the professional training. So I definitely agree on that one. Yeah, you can definitely see that in your choice of basic questions because they're really <laughs> well crafted. Well, thank you for saying that. And now I want to ask you one of those well crafted questions. What is your favorite book? It doesn't have to be a business book. It doesn't have to be a sketch no dinner book. It just has to be a book that you go back to time and time again. Well, for me, um, that would be Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. It's a wonderfully written story with lots of elements in it that I can relate to, and it just rings true to me. And I, I think I've read that book about 10 times already. It's just a novel. It's a science fiction novel. I'm heavily into science fiction. Um, and I think it's because I read it when I was a boy, really loved the story, and it, it takes me back to the aspirations I had when I was a boy. So it, it, it keeps me grounded so to speak to read that book every now and then so it keeps a book that keeps you grounded there we go that's always a good thing a book that keeps you grounded and what is your favorite podcast to listen to and yes npr counts but i know you're in london and so i know you're cross pond if you guys haven't noticed the time difference here, but what is your favorite podcast to listen to? Um, I'm actually not in London, <laughs> but in Dordrecht, which is in the Netherlands. Oh my and, God. Oh my God. I so apologize it's, for that. It's, it's one hour further still, but it's really close to London. I'm, I'm, I can get there in one hour. Yeah. Um, that said, my favorite podcast, it was really a hard question because I love so many podcasts. That yes, <laughs> but if I ha if I can name only one, and of course that's the sport here, then it would be the Tough Girl podcast by Sarah Williams. Aha, uh -huh. that's the that's an excellent one. That's an excellent one. I need to get back to that one myself because Tough Girls are um, my middle name, and so that's an excellent one. And that podcast that you guys could be found in every single podcast and every single podcasting aggregator app no in demand tough girl podcast and that's a phenomenal one i'm surprised 
you say that when we're talking about sketch noting because <laughs> you have a ventured uh, adventurous spirit, don't you? Well, um, yeah, it's more the spirit than the body that's adventurous. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, good. <laughs> but, good. Um, but there is an adventure spirit uh, for sure. There is a yes. connection though between uh, that podcast and sketch noting because I used to do, and actually I'm, I'm still planning to do some more. Um, I, I used to practice uh, with that podcast and creating video scribes, so like these animated whiteboard movies where I, I have my notes animated to the, the topic of the podcast. And I use Sarah Williams' podcast to draw whatever is in the podcast. And that really helped me hone my craft as, um, as a video scribe. So you, okay, back up. You can actually take um, art of note-taking as a video scribe. You can actually do it on an uh, iPhone. You can actually do it on a video. Yes, indeed. Because I was going to say, if you didn't even evolve technology in this one, I was, we were going to have cut a conversation afterwards <laughs> offline because when you open up the notes app on uh, Android or iPhone, they automatically pop up a pencil, a pen, a marker. And I know this because I use the iPhone all the time. So my noting is something, sketch noting in my noting is something that you could do on the i phone and on the android side and on tablets now with the apple pencil and i want to know why that is such a big thing such a big debate in the sketch noting community ah well i think um the debate there is that a lot of people that got started um way back when they got started for a love of paper and they got started as a way to bring people together physically in usually big circles, um, a little bit touchy feely there, but in a good way. Yes. And they love that sense of communion that is that you only get when people are actually together in a room. And you sort of miss that when you, you go clinical, when you go almost perfect in the first stroke, which is what you get when you use, for example, an app on my iPad like Concepts, which I love and I always use for sketch noting. You can just basically say, oh, I want to draw like perfect lines today. So I'm going to put the automatically perfect drawing thing to 90%. And then it just does that, which I would, which I can imagine actually would be an, an excellent tool for somebody with bad handwriting, for example. Um, but is of course, for the people that started all this, it's like a, a, a form of blasphemy, right? Because the, the whole sport was to do this with a beautifully physical marker and thick ink and stuff like that. A beautifully crafted pen too. I mean, we yeah. could go down the pen rabbit hall like this no tomorrow. And so that was one of my other questions. When you are not doing um, sketch noting digitally, what is your favorite pen to use when you're doing sketch noting? Uh, the favorite, my favorite pen to use when I uh, sketch note is a Sakura Pigma Micron, which is that they're like fine liners. Uh, when I'm not sketch noting, uh, I just use a fountain pen um, because that's what I used when I got started with writing. Yeah, and I still love the sensation of fountain penning on paper. Yeah, I'll write it too. I'm sorry? You're a writer too? Well, no, because to actually be considered a writer, you have to actively write. So I'm more uh, an aspiring writer than an actual writer. But I well, love writer. maybe you should do a book on sketch noting. Maybe, maybe you should do a self published book on sketch noting because I think this sketch noting thing is fascinating to me at least. I don't know 
if it's fascinating to the rest of the world, but I think you should publish a book on sketchnoting because I think people who are not so into mind mapping would get a kick out of sketchnoting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually I just point those people to the books by Mike Rohde because he has uh, written two great books that I feel that I probably can't add to. Um, however, I've added at least a little bit to one of those books, so that makes me sort of proud. Um, some of my work is in there. And uh, I'm considering doing an online course, though. That's um, something that I would um, that I would really like to create. Well, you should do an online course because... We need to get this information out there. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people have told me, you need to mind map this out. You need to mind map this out. And I'm like, oh, great. Here's another person telling me, mind map this out. Brand, they want to do this in X, Y, and Z. They don't want to do the pretty aspect of it. I would rather do the pretty aspect of it. Mm-hmm. So, okay, what is your favorite technology tool that you use on a daily basis? Mm, the favorite technology tool I use Trello to do is real-time board to structure and schedule everything in, in both my private and business life, but it's not favorite. My favorite tool, though, that, that would either have to be lead pages or convert it. I don't use them. Um, on a daily basis and not effectively enough yet but every time that I do use them I get a huge smile on my face and like a a sense of achievement that I'm really working on what I want to get better at and they are just so easy the other day I had to whip out a lead page for my wife who was starting a new business and it was like done in 10 minutes which is uh, amazingly faster than I usually am at creating stuff like that so that those tools I really love. Lead pages. Uh, yeah, I figured you were going to say that. And where can people find you and where can people get a hold of you? And before I let you go, I'm actually going to have you turn the mic on me for mm-hmm. a couple questions that you can ask me about anything. Uh, good. Well, uh, people can find me through my website, Monoma Inc. So it's B O double N E M A dot Inc. with uh, as in ink with a K. Uh, so not a C. Uh, it's all about ink with me. Um, and to, well, to ask you questions um, for people like me that that don't know what it is to have a CP, what what is the main thing that you wish we would be mindful of when interacting with you? <laughs> I just had this experience um, yesterday. I was at a fair event, and I wish people, and maybe my voice isn't loud enough, but I wish people would move out of the way. One, because I'm in a walker. Two, because I have my sense of balance is completely off now. CP affects affects people differently. So um, my sense of balance is completely off. But with most people, their sense of balance is completely off. So I would love people to move out of my way when I say excuse me. Oh, my God, it's common courtesy there. Or when anyone says, excuse me. And the other thing I want people to know, and people ask me this all the time, is we judge a book by its cover. And a lot of the time, able-bodied people think people with any disability doesn't have lights on in their Uh brains. (laughs) And that's not true. No, no, that's you're, not you're, true at all. No, so you're, you're a writer. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm a writer. I'm a writer by trade now, and I'm going to get the professional aspect starting in September. So I'm a writer by trade. I'm actually making a pivot in my job, 
and so I can concentrate on writing more than I have in the past, and then I'm actually leaving my teaching job gracefully and becoming a full-time writer. Awesome. So what are you working on at the moment? I am now publishing as of today or as of this week, I'm now publishing my second book. My second autobiography, sorry, not my second book, my second autobiography called The Mosaic of CP. And the reason why I'm doing a second biography is because I want to know, I want people to know where I'm now. And I wrote the original biography when I was when I was 23, and so it's time for me to um, let people know where I am now. And then I am putting my focus on YA young adult novels with the aspect of CP and all disabilities included in those, well, in those young adult novels. Mm -hmm. And what um, writing tip? never fails to make things better for aspiring writers. You're asking me. I didn't think you were going to ask me this one. I think just practicing your craft, if you are doing, let's say, a book on Minodine and um, the art of Minodine or the art of note sketching, you would have to practice your craft just like podcasting, processing your craft makes it better. Yeah, indeed. That is, that, that, that's, that's always what it is. Just practice, practice, actually do it. Practice makes perfect. And allow yourself to not be good at it at the, from the get go. Yes. Thank you very much. Exactly. No, thank you for coming on Butterflies of Wisdom and explaining what um, you do and why you're so passionate about it. And as I said, we'll have all of Laura's information in the show notes. And if you guys hear a little bit better audio, this is why we're doing it via Zoom. And via Zoom is going to stay. And via Zoom and my iPhone are going to be the combination trick here for this podcast. Because as I said to Laura, we need to practice the craft. And I am dang sick and tired of doing it on my iPhone. So now that I have Zoom hooked up again, Zoom is here to stay. But I appreciate you guys listening to another fabulous episode. And by the time you hear this episode, it will be... Wednesday, so I hope you enjoy what we talked about today. Thanks, see you guys.